the border area between Venezuela and Colombia has long been a violent, uh, crime-affected area. Over the last few years, the very deeply rooted crisis in Venezuela caused more than 5 million persons to flee across the country borders. And has also caused uh, a real deterioration in relations between Colombia and Venezuela. COVID has made uh, a difficult situation in Venezuela, in Colombia and in their board areas a whole lot worse. This is what it looked like in Venezuela's public hospitals before the pandemic. Overrun, a shortage of doctors and drugs, no electricity or even running water. Colombia's president, Ivan Duque, announced its closure to contain the spread of COVID-19. On Friday, Venezuela confirmed two cases of coronavirus, but many feared that number could be higher as the country struggles with a humanitarian crisis. First of all, Colombia closed uh, the border crossing, the land crossing with Venezuela in March. It remains closed to this day uh, out of fear that people moving from one side to the other will spread the disease. And for the Colombians, they don't know whether the number of infected people reported in Venezuela is real or not. So the concern is that if they open the border, the, the disease could just spread like wildfire. Um, but the other concern is that by closing the border, you don't close at the same time all those other informal border crossings, the non-official border crossings, which are run by criminal groups, violent groups, making a profit, charging a fee to let people go across. The largest remaining Colombian guerrilla force, the ELN, has become a dominant actor on both sides of the Colombian and Venezuelan border. What we see, especially in Venezuela, is that their presence is backed up or at least tolerated by the Venezuelan state and its security forces. Some Venezuelans living in border areas even explain that the presence of the ELN has helped improve the situation with regards to security, as the guerrillas sometimes helped stamp out petty crime. Nevertheless, the ELN guerrillas also are an actor of violence who dedicate themselves to extortion kidnapping and other illicit economies. Since these non-state armed groups basically represent the only face of authority on the border, we see that many vulnerable communities are submerged in their operations. And since they have no other alternatives to participate in these illicit economies, one of the consequences is that these vulnerable communities are even more criminalized by the state and therefore already also more pushed into the hands of these illicit networks. When meeting with Venezuelan refugees and migrants on the border, we gathered a lot of stories about the violence they're subjected to on the informal pathways. We have spoken to women who have been raped on the informal border crossings, men who have been beaten up in the, on the informal border crossings because they're not able to pay the few dollars of passage fee to the non-state armed outfits that are in control of these border crossings. We've heard the most terrible stories about um, human trafficking, exploitation of refugees who are often forced, forced to traffic certain commodities across the border under violent threat by non-state armed groups. And we've been gathering testimonies of these refugees and migrants to understand the hardship they have been facing as a consequence of political decisions. It's now vital that there is some effort to rebuild uh, communication and a, and a modicum of trust between Colombia and Venezuela, simply because of the size of this border, over 2,000 kilometers, the number of different armed groups and violent actors uh, using the border to make money for themselves, the flow of migrants, and of course, the very real risk that contagion of COVID can spread from one side to the other. There has to be coordination between the sides. There has been, there have been efforts in this direction. They haven't really uh, come off. Uh, communication remains very poor, but it, it's essential, especially if the border is to reopen uh, next year, that the, the Colombian and Venezuelan authorities can communicate with one another in an environment based on trust.